Why does that feel like that's too high? I, I mean, low. Know. I don't know. Hey, everybody. Hey. It is 9 o'clock. It is Wednesday night. So you know what that means. It is time for Real Talk with Jesus, me, and D. And you are here live tonight with me. There's my sister. She's right on time. Amen. Oh, yeah. Hey, Pew. Hey, praise the Lord, Brother Ernie. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, Brother Ernie. We ain't seen you in a while. Good to see you on there tonight. Amen. Amen. Hopefully you stay with us. Hopefully we say something that blesses your heart. Amen. So, hey, everybody, we're just um, glad to have you with us tonight. And again, it's Real Talk with me, uh, Jesus Mandy, and this is, you know, my co-host, the Oracle, Dion. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, Amen. We're just, um, you know, glad to have you guys with us, and we're going to um, jump right in. We're going to start with a word of prayer. Um, Dion is a little under the weather, and bless her little heart. So much stuff going on, but God is faithful. He's still good. So we're going to start with a word of prayer, and I'm just going to ask that you would just, you know, bow your head with me and you know, as we're praying, if you got a request, let it be made known unto God. Amen. Because we believe prayer answering God. Hey, Autumn and Larissa, good to have you guys with us. Autumn, your package should be there by this weekend. I put it in the mail yesterday, so you should have your Bibles in the in the next couple of days if you don't have them today. Hey, Daria. Hey. Hey, how's everybody doing tonight? It's good to have you with us. We're getting ready to just start off with prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for another day. We thank you for all of your goodness that you have bestowed upon us one more time. We thank you, God, for just this opportunity to come and to share your word and to share a conversation and just have fellowship with you through your word. And God, we just ask you to just meet the need of everybody that's watching tonight, those that are going to be watching the broadcast after tonight. We know the word is not bound. The word is ever living. The seed is alive because it's spirit. So, Father, we just ask you to meet the needs of those watching. Lord, let something be said and done tonight that will change somebody's heart and change somebody's life and cause them to focus their attention on you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Well, we're going to get started. Um, you know, we start every week with D, and we're actually on a D watch. I don't know if we're going to get any updates tonight, but we usually start every Wednesday with words from the Oracle. She usually has some type of a word of wisdom, and she's going to speak to us through blowing her nose tonight. So, you know, y'all just, you know, hey, just it is what it is. It's real talk. It's allergies. It's allergies. Sinus infection from the allergies. So um, my update for the week, um, God just kept me through the week like he always does. Amen. Um, just grinding back and forth. And I guess I don't really have too much of an update. So Amen. kind of quiet this week. God is good. Amen. Well, you want to speak on the D watch, what we were, we're, we're watching for something to um, happen. And you know what? God is just. He's so multifaceted. It could be anything. So, you know, without going into a whole lot of detail, the, the, the weekend, um, the weekend, you know, you had a little visit out of town. Hey, Jackie Wilson. Hey. Hey. So, I mean, it was a visit at, you know, just an event. And really, I just feel like, um, I feel like Ruth. Hey, you know, man. Because Ruth. We're supposed to let the man find us. We're not supposed amen, to go find amen, the man. Amen. But the Lord just laid on my heart that I am just taking myself to be seen. Amen. You know, Ruth was just seen and she just, you know, sashayed. Hey, Tamar. The Boaz cake. Yes. So um, I'm like, maybe I'm just Ruth right now and I'm just looking pretty and. It's really not wasting my time, but I really feel like it's wasting my time. You know what? Hey, Clara. Um, you know what? You said, Ruth, and, and I haven't talked to Dion. We're mm -hmm. on the Dion watch. You know, this is the year of abundant harvest. We're believing for things to happen. Mm -hmm. Dion has already experienced God doing some things in her life. 
Right. Now, I didn't say anything to you about this no. other than, you know, go. You were, she was invited. And again, you know, we're, we're, it's a Dion watch. So Dion is allowing us the privilege of being, she's being transparent with, with go, what's going on in her life right now. Sure. She's allowing that to happen. Sure. So having said that, um, when Dion, you know, Dion was invited away and she's in ministry in our church. So uh, her first thing was, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm busy at home. And I was like, well, Dion, I'm not going to hold you back. Um, cause I just don't, I don't, I don't feel led to do that. And as a matter of fact, I have been encouraging you to go Yeah. and, you know, not, I'm trying to kick her out or anything, but I was encouraging her. If the Lord laid upon your heart to go, please go. Right. Now I, the Lord also, um, spoke to me about Ruth. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, I had to do a report at one of my classes. I had to actually do a PowerPoint presentation and it was on Ruth. And, um, as you were as you were away this weekend, I thought the exact same thing. The Bible said, "He who finds a wife finds a good thing." Right now, Dion has made no secret; she's been wanting to be married for since she was eighteen years old, and that is, you know, the Bible said that women are created for the man. Right now, I can teach on that. I actually have done a teaching on that. Women are created for men, right. and I know some of y'all may not agree, but we were. Um, so that's a natural desire for her to want to be married. Right. You never said anything to me about, you know, the Ruth issue, the Ruth angle. Right. But the Lord actually spoke to me and said, that's, you know, that's what Ruth did. She didn't, she wasn't looking for Boaz. She followed the instructions. Somebody gave her instruction. Mm -hmm. Her mother-in-law, Naomi gave her instruction. And she said, go glean in Boaz's field. Mm -hmm. That's all the mother-in-law said. At that particular point, she wasn't trying to hook Ruth up. She was just trying, you know, they needed food. Right. And she just said, go glean in, you know, Boaz's field. And when she went and, you know, gleaned in the field, Boaz, you know, took a liking to her, saw her, so forth and so on. She came back and she told her mother-in-law what happened. Right. And then Naomi said, well, do X, Y, Z. But originally it was just, you know, hey, an invitation, go glean in the field. Yeah. So as far as I'm concerned, you were gleaning in the field. I was gleaning. And, you you know, you didn't put on no parade or nothing like that. You were just there. So I felt like, you know, and I think I told, um, I think I told Daria, you know, hey, I want you to feel free if you if you feel, you know, that you want to go and visit again, you know, however, because right. we, we don't know what God is, how God is going to do things. We just know he will do things, right? right? And that's how I feel. I, I don't know what's going to happen at this point. I'm like, it's been so long. God could just do anything. Who knows? Who Amen. knows how he's going to do it? Amen. 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 Well, amen. So we thank God for the Dion uh, Wash update. So we're still watching that process. We believe amen. this is Dion's year and something phenomenal is going to happen. So amen. having said that, um, we talked last week. We've been talking about being... Um, purposeful in our spending time with God in the morning. Right. And um, you know, if anybody has a, a report tonight or has a testimony, please feel free to share because we always like to get those praise reports and updates. But Amen. we talked last week about going to another subject. We have been on purposeful prayer for several weeks now. And uh, a lot of things have happened. A lot of things have happened. I, I've I've had some twists and turns this week, too, but I said I'm not going to say a word. So ain't nobody going to know what happens until it's all said and done. But I'm still spending purposeful time with God in prayer in the morning, and I'm expecting God to do. I was listening to a, a teaching yesterday, and one of the biggest things is expecting. You know, I, I, I all weekend, I just kept rehearsing the same, um, the same scripture, mm -hmm. and that is um, Matthew 7. And I think it's seven through 11 at least. And that scripture is very familiar with a lot of us. And that is, um, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Amen. Knock and the door will be open. Amen. Knock and the door will be open. And I just kept repeating that scripture all weekend long. Because I'm expecting something. Now I have it in my mind what I want. But I always add the qualifier, God, you know me better than I know me. 
and I say I want this, right. but if this is not what I really want, you know, don't let me get in no mess. I think I really want it, right. but I'm asking God at the same time, Lord, you know, you know me better. So the, the individual that was teaching this particular um, message, and, I, and this is not what we're talking about. I just, want, I just feel led to drop this on somebody. But he was talking about asking, you shall receive, seeking, you shall find, knock, and the door shall be open. <clears throat> and the next part of that, the next scripture verse is, for everyone that asks, receives, mm -hmm. and everyone that seeks, finds, and to him that knocks, the door will be open. And this individual, he was saying that um, sometimes we don't know exactly what to ask. Sometimes we, we don't, you know, we're petitioning the Lord for something, but we may not really know how to ask, mm -hmm. or it may not really be, like I just said, it may not be really what you what you want or you think you want. Mm -hmm. But he, he went on to say, um, sometimes we, we have to ask God, Lord, give me the right opportunity. That might be a question that we need to ask. Give me the right opportunity and point me to the right door to knock on. I thought that was good. Mm -hmm. Point me to the right door to knock on. I don't want to just knock on any door. Right. So I said all that to say I'm I'm expecting something from God. I'm excited. I've had some a couple of little things pop off. I ain't shared it with nobody. I'm gonna keep it close to my chest till it happens. So anywho, mm -hmm. that is that harkens back to our purposeful time of the morning. But this week we're gonna start to talk on a new topic, and that is the topic of relationships. Amen. And I find that. Um, the topic of relationships always gets a lot of a lot of activity, a lot of participation. Okay. Um, why do you think that is, D? Because have we, you found that? Do you? Yeah. Do you find that a lot people talk a lot about relationships? Because we all have something going on in our relationships. Okay. It's it's very common. That's our life, our family, our friends. That's mm -hmm. all relationship. Our mm -hmm. job, coworkers. Man, all that is relationships. So it's just something that we deal with all the hours of the day except when we're sleeping. Okay. Okay. So it's just common for us. Okay. Well, uh, you know, I just seemingly, and I, and I kind of played around, not played around, but I just really kind of sought the Lord on going in that direction because there's so many avenues and there's so many facets of talking about relationship that we can talk about right so i just kind of want to tonight and, and we may not even be here all night long because well, we're not we're not here all night long but we may not be here as long because i know people are getting ready for tomorrow the big fourth of july and we pray all of you guys have a safe Amen. happy fourth of july eat a rib for me hey adrian pretty girls good to see you tonight hey. um Eat a rib for me, you know, don't go overboard. But in, in talking about relationships, I kind of want to just kind of get our feet wet tonight. I don't I don't know if we're gonna dive all the way deep, but I want to kind of get our feet tonight wet tonight and talk about there are a couple of relationships that I want to talk on. I want to hit over the next couple of weeks. But mm -hmm. the first one I want to talk about is relationships between us women as women to women sister to sister not necessarily maybe friend to friend but kind of more of a generic uh in, in my 50 some years of life it, it it i always see well i don't want to say i always see but it's not uncommon to see us women not really being supportive of each other right it's not uncommon for us to you know the camaraderie, the sisterhood, the closeness that should be there sometimes is lacking. Is, is anybody out there, can anybody out there um, identify with what I'm saying? Um, mm -hmm. I know when I first moved to, to where I'm at now, and um, I came from Delaware, which was very, we were very close-knit there, very close-knit community, and Everybody knew each other and it could have been because I grew up there, but everybody knew each other. Everybody was, you know, we all, we always talk, we always fellowship. Hey, and when I moved here, I don't know how many times I saw women like me who refused, not didn't, but refused to even speak and even, 
even start a conversation. Right. And it, it, it's still, it, it's as bad today as it was when I moved here 20 years ago. And it still amazes me that we have basic commonality. We're all women. That's number one. And regardless of color, regardless of your job, right. your status quo, how much money you got in the bank, who you're connected to, we're all women. And just based on that, hey, Debbie, good to have you with us tonight. And just based on that alone, there should be some type of a, of a uh, cohesiveness. Am I the only one? Okay, Dion, can you, can you speak to that? Is yeah. there anybody else that can speak to that? I don't know what it is. I don't know. People are just so in their own little bubble. They won't even make eye contact with you. But you know what? That's not really a good. Ex that's not a good excuse. Oh no, no excuses. Most of them are never are. So it's it's because again, isn't there something inherent in 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 humans and especially women? Y'all weigh in on this. Those of you guys who are watching, weigh in on this. Mm -hmm. Isn't there some in, inherent a um, uh, 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 quality that makes us women want to be uh, uh, um, a part of another a sisterhood, or am I the only one that feels that way? Am I the only one that thinks that it's it's abnormal to okay? Larissa said people are just funny acting. Okay, let's 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 funnel that down. Let's let's go back to like the where we're talking from. And, and, and give me a reason why you think people are acting funny because, again, I want to go past the surface of people are just acting funny, too. Why would you want to act funny? That, that's a good question. But why? You know, you don't know me from Adam, so you don't, you don't know me well enough to act funny if there was a reason for you to act funny. We, we haven't even got um, – I'm glad we're glad to have you here tonight, too. So And weigh in if you got comments. So you don't have enough. You don't have a. You don't have enough of a report on me to assume that there's a reason to be funny toward me. We're. It's just. We're just vanilla right here. I'm a woman. You're a woman. You know. We. We. We have the same. We got the same body. I might have more on my body than you, but we got the same body parts. Um, no, we don't have. You know. We don't all come from the same background we don't have the same experiences but we're still basically women it's you know we're the we're the the what are we the x or the y i think we're the x the chromosome somebody help me i don't want to say we the men if we not the men so so you know we have the basics that we share so i i'm i'm i'm, I'm concerned on just the the surface and i'm still trying to to relate to people, and 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 then you add in, Dion, come in here and finish um, telling us what Adrian wrote, because I, I don't, I only see part of what she wrote. Maybe we can find the rest of it. Um, I've learned that people can only. We don't see the rest of it, Adrian. Yeah, we only see the only can only part. Okay, Larissa said maybe they're jealous, and again. Um, I give you that too, but again, of what? On 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 just grins and giggles. I get out. I'm literally this happened to me. This happened to me. When I first moved here, I was in the Dollar General, mm -hmm. walking down the aisle. Okay, Jackie's got a response. People are so used to interacting on social media that they forget how to speak in person. I always try to speak and say a kind word. Even if I don't know, that's good. That's good. That's good. And I, I will say that social media has a part, but I'm gonna still say a small part. I'm gonna say a small part, but I, I get that. But I was walking down the aisle in Dollar General, and I'm proud. I was probably bigger than I am now. I was probably about a good twenty pounds heavier than I am now. Amen. And I'm not no. I'm not a skinny mini right now. And if you've ever been in a Dollar General, all of them are crowded. All Dollar Generals is stuff. It's like the shelves, the aisles are real narrow, and there's stuff spilling off the. It's just crammed. All Dollar Generals that I have been in are crammed. So I'm in the aisle, 
and I'm walking, pushing my cart down the aisle, and another woman like me comes up the aisle toward me. And we both, I'll just say this, and, and I can say it about me, and I can say it about her too. We both was nice sized black women. And I'm, you know, I'm me, I'm smiling my face, getting ready to open my mouth. How you? She looked at me and turned her head. Had never seen me before. Did never see me before. Now, it couldn't have been that I did something to her. Right. Because I had never seen her before. You just seen her. I had just seen her. But right off the bat, just a just an attitude. Just just nice, nasty, out of the blue. So my question is, is there something, is there a an inward common denominator that kind of make, and let's be honest, y'all, this is called Real Talk with Jesus, me, and D. Because you you're not on here unless you enjoy Real talking and you want to be part of Real Talk. But somebody help me. Is, is, is there something in us that 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 we we just naturally have a, an aversion to other women. We are we're jealous of other women. We 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 are afraid of other women. Y'all talk back to me. Y'all talk to okay. This is what Adrian said. So she got cut off. I've learned that people can only go as deep with you as they've gone with themselves. Oh, that's good. If they're insecure, that's good. Insecure and emotionally unhealthy, they will naturally lack the ability to genuinely connect in a relationship. That's, that's good, good, Adrian. Yeah. That's Amen. good. That's good. I can, I can I do I can understand that. I can understand that. So that gives me that gives me a little bit more light on on how to actually now I guess interact with people. Um, they, in other words, basically what you're saying, if I'm correct, if am I correct in understanding you, is you can't give what you have never received. Amen. Does that sound right? Sure. Okay, so that helps me out. People can't give what they re, they have never received. And I guess because I came from such a blessed background, um, I didn't have. And 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 I'm I'm taking I'm studying um, Christian uh, counseling, and I'm studying psychology and and a whole lot of whole lot of you know terminology like that, psychology, sociology, um, all kind of issues. And going back to what. Adrian just said, people are really messed up, Dion. Amen. I guess I really never paid it any attention or I, it never crossed my doorstep. Hey, Jody, that people really have problems, Dion. And one of the things that I found out in my study was that if you are an individual that has not been molested, some type of way, abuse, some type of abuse, and it doesn't have to always be sexual abuse, although that's, a, that's probably a big part of it. But if you've not experienced some type of abuse, if you are, have not, you are the minority. Because yeah. most people have been. And going back to what Adrian said, now that I kind of put those things together, that's why people act crazy. And I don't mean that in a bad way. And, I, and, and, and Lord forgive me for make, using that statement because I, I chastise my husband every time he says that. People don't act crazy. They act out of where they are. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, people, you know, it's, you know, going away from what Adrian was saying and you were saying, but people are just messy. I know when we moved here, a certain woman that we are now friends with, she thought I was interested in her husband. That's why she was so, okay. if you want to say, quote, unquote, nasty. Okay. Her nastiness came from the place of, you're threatened by me. Okay. I never even gave the impression that I wanted her, you know, her mate. Right. But she acted the way she did because she thought I wanted her husband. Mm -hmm. So some, you know, some people, yes, you know, they can't relate because they don't, they don't know how to receive it because they've never experienced it. And some people are just... Quote unquote, just mess. mess. Okay. Okay. Messiness. Okay. Well, you know, something to be said about the messiness. But can you also say with that messiness, because you mentioned the word insecurity. Right. So, you know, again, if you're not comfortable with you, yeah, definitely. Then you can project off on other people right. your messiness. Right. Because that was nowhere in your mind. Right. 
that you wanted that individual's husband. But again, people come from where they are. They, you know, like, they yeah, definitely. Like she was saying, basically, you don't know how to interpret that if you yourself have not really experienced right, it. Right, right, so. right. And it, and it was new for me when I moved here. It was very new for me because I've always been free, always been, you know, uh, friendly. So for me to have to pull my feelings back in, for me to have to always check, Debbie said hurt people, hurt people, and they do. For me to always have to check myself, th that was never a good feeling. I don't like that. I, you know, you know, I was told years and years and years ago I was very naive. And there's something to be said about being naive. Okay, I get it that you shouldn't be, you know, you shouldn't put your place, yourself in a place to be used and taken advantage of. But at the same time, um, there's, you know, along with that naivety, you have like a freedom. Like, um, what's that movie? Um, That's not helping you. Okay, I know it's not helping you. Um, Life is like a box of chocolates. Uh, Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump. You know, Forrest had, he, he had an, an abandon. He, he didn't see people's messy. You, you get what I'm saying? How are you doing, Johnny? It's good to have you. We ain't seen you a while. Good to have mm -hmm. you with us tonight. So he, he didn't see people's messy. Right. And so sometimes we can't, we have to overlook the messy. Sometimes we just have to overlook mm -hmm. the messiness of the situation. But again, mm -hmm. it does not discount or it does not excuse away our behavior. Hey, Teresa, nice to have you with us tonight. Mm -hmm. I hope you're enjoying Thank you for spending some time with us. So we have to we have to make sure that, you know, I guess, you know, based on the comments tonight and going back to what I said, I guess we just really have to make sure that we we take away a much as much as the as much of the um whatever would threaten people, whatever would cause them to not want to deal with us. We I don't know how we could be, be more more vanilla though. I just I don't understand that. I don't know how we could be more engaging, but I guess some people are just gonna be nasty no matter what you do. Pretty much. I mean, I know when I at the, my job every day, um, you could be walking and people they could look straight in your eyes and you like you. I almost feel scared to say hi because they the way they're looking like you know mm. don't speak to me. Like some some of them look like that. Don't speak to me, oh, and you're my. like, okay, do I say hi? Or do I keep mm -hmm. on moving? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I mean, at that point, you have to force yourself to say hi, but I'm like, some of them women, they be looking like, just keep on walking, don't even say nothing. They actually look like that. Oh my gosh. And I'd be thinking, okay, I'm going to be quiet, I'm going to walk on past you, mm. but a lot of times they do that. They just walk right by you. So. Okay, well, you know. And they look like me, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jackie Wilson says, this is hard. Um, you have such an amazing welcome experience, and not everybody is open to receiving that because it's not what they are used to. And you know what? I get that. You guys are really helping me because I struggle with, and it's not that you want to be um, accepted. For me, it was just common sense. I was raised in an era where you spoke to people. It's not common. You, 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 and you've said that before. It's not common. common. It's, it's not, not common sense. And I guess that's right because explain that, Dion. Common sense is not common sense. Something that you and I would think is normal or what we're supposed to do, not everyone knows to do that. And that's amazing to me. And I don't know why it should be, but it still catches me off guard. Yeah. It still catches me that what, you know, the, the things that I was raised with, they are foreign to people. Yeah. I was, you know, talking oh, to no. someone. We had a, a visitor in Bible study this afternoon. And I asked her a question, um, you know, have, have you heard about, you know, had, had you heard the story of Adam? She said, no. I said, had you heard the story of Moses? She said, no. I said, well, have you heard the story of David and Goliath? She said, no. And in my mind, I'm thinking, really? You haven't heard these stories? But she had no clue. So I guess, you know, you, you can relate that to, you know, people not having um, common sense. Yeah. That, you know, they're, and, and again, Going back to the comment that I think Jackie Wilson uh, raised about social media, it's only going to get worse. Yeah. I noticed my grandkids, they'll, you know, they'll play for a few minutes. My grandson, he'll nana blah, 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 for a few minutes. And the next few minutes he's gone, he's watching YouTube videos or on his tablet. They're, all, they're so engulfed in what's in front of them. Mm -hmm. 
that's basically their world, their circle, Amen. is what's in front of them. So they're not really bothered about engaging with other people. So having said that, then, you know, I guess I need to prepare myself for things to even go downhill faster. Because if that's the way that things are headed, then I need to prepare myself now. So when I see people and I open my mouth only for somebody to turn their head, then I'm looking simple because my mouth is hanging up. And I guess I need to stop that. Well, but he said just uh, prepare yourself. I'm prepared. Well, it still doesn't feel good. Um, it may not feel good, although Teresa said, um, say hi, let the Father convict them they need it. So, amen. amen. Go ahead and say hi. Amen. I might feel threatened walking down the hall because mm -hmm. they're looking like, hey, don't speak. But mm -hmm. if I say, kill them with kindness, go ahead and say, hey. Amen. That's a it good thought. Moving. That's a good thought. That's a good thought. Keep Kill them moving. with kindness. Keep it moving. Say, hey, maybe the father will convict them. Convict them. Um, that's, that's, that's something that I'm going to have to try. It, it, you know, it works because there's women now that I don't really know their name, but every day they're just so pleasant and loving mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just in the passing of the, in the hallway. So just, you know, simply just saying hi. Amen. Make someone's day. Someone said the other day um, on Facebook, give someone a compliment. Mm -hmm. you know, of course, be mm -hmm. genuine, mm -hmm. but just give them a compliment and just see how it just affects right. their mood and how right. they walk. And, you know, maybe not that I would be complimenting them as they're walking down the halls, mm -hmm. but again, just simply saying hi and, you know, putting my fear aside because they look like, mm -hmm. you know, a buffalo walking down the hall. Yee. Say hi. <laughs> Lighten the mood. Let some Amen. smiles come in the hallway. Amen. We all have a good day. So. Amen. I actually heard, I think, I don't know where I saw that, but I actually saw that too. Um, go out of your way to compliment mm -hmm. somebody. Right. And maybe that's something that, although I do try to do that, but maybe that's something that I'll try even more. Amen. Is to go out of my way to, to, uh, to, to compliment somebody. Because I am concerned about how we treat each other as women. That really bothers me. I'm concerned about that. Mm -hmm. I feel like, um, again, are we the X or the Y? We're the X chromosome, aren't someone, we? I think someone said X. Okay. All right. Um, it, it, it bothers me that, you know, I've been, you know, kind of in dealing with a situation that's a little closer. The way you're looking at me. You say that every week, but it's because I'm engaged. Oh, amen. I'm in it. Amen. I'm in it. <laughs> you're flowing. I'm in amen. it. Amen. Amen. So I've been kind of engaged in a, you know, in a little, little, little something going on with some people that I love that are very close to me. Very and there, there was, you know, there's been a little friction and, and, and the, mm -hmm. I think the thing that bothers me is at the very core of us. And I guess this is my issue with women too. We just, we're all we have. Amen. We are all we have. We, you know, if, if the world ends tomorrow, there are just some people that I'm going to look to to provide a safety net for me, a, a, you know, to, to su surround my world and to protect me. And I kind of feel like, and maybe because I'm a mother and I'm a woman, I feel like that's what we women do. I'll never forget um, when the, do you remember we hadn't been out moved, hadn't been living out here very long and there was a fire right behind us. Yeah. There was a fire in the house right behind us. And, um, we ran up the street, me, Deanna, and Daria ran up the street. We were standing out in the street watching the fire. And the little boy came out. Now, he had a family. It was a mom. And I believe it was him and his sister and a mom and a dad and a dog. And the little boy ran out in the street. He was just crying, crying, crying. I guess everybody was in their own little world. I didn't know this little boy from Adam. But I immediately just went up and just hugged him and, you know, tried to console him. And how do you remember that? Because I don't know. I just do. Amen. But I said that to say, to me, it's natural. Mm -hmm. It's natural for us to to be there for each other. Right. I have, you know, I have, I have many times, strangers have fallen in my arms and wept and cried. Um, I'm trying to think. I think I did something not too long ago. Just you know, somebody was in need, and 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 they look like I'm one of those people. I'm either gonna help you. And, and honestly, in sincerity, or I'm a laugh, and I don't mean no harm. I don't mean no harm. I'm just silly like that. Some things just hit me, and I'll just laugh. But um, 
I think I, it was it was kind of, I was kind of like torn, you know, do I or do I not? And I ended up, you know, going to this person's aid. But for me, that's a natural because I want somebody to do, to, to to help me. So, you know, again, I, you know, I appreciate all the comments and that's going to help me going going for, forward to kind of, you know, work some things out. Maybe somebody's having a bad day or maybe they're just nasty because there are some people that are just nasty. Sure. We trying to pretty it up, but there are some people that are just nasty. But again, that comes from what happened to them. You know, maybe they were treated nasty. I love Ayama. Does anybody out there else out there love Ayama? I, I'd like to hear the way she um, coaches people and how she she makes them, you know, identify with you know the real issues. And and sometimes she'll just call a spade a spade. She'll just call you out. And sometimes we need to be called out because sometimes we nasty. Definitely. Sometimes we're nasty to each other. That's hey, just the real. What'd you say? I said okay, Nene. Oh well, either each other, each other. Okay. Well, sometimes we just nasty to each other. Mm -hmm. And even though we're we're talking about women, because we're women, there are a couple of men on here earlier. I don't know if they're still with us. You know, I don't know if you men, and if you men are still there, reach out and give me a holler. Let me know. I don't perceive men as being nasty to each other as to other men as we can be nasty to other women. Definitely. We can just be ugly nasty. Definitely. And sometimes, you know, yeah, something happened in the background. Yeah, something happened in your life. Yeah, but sometimes we just nasty, and we need to put that on blast. We need to stop that because we are all we have. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even talking about those of us that confess being filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay, what did Alan say? I don't know if you remember, but when we went to Fiesta, we were outside, and a slanderous name was yelled out of the truck, and we all just looked at each other. But we did not do we did not do what the series of expression. We agree that we should pray for them. I don't remember that autumn, but um, you know. I don't remember. I don't remember. But that's good. That's that's a good thought. Mm -hmm. We have to we have to rise above. And I guess you know at the bottom of you know at at, at the bottom of this conversation, that's what it boils down to. We mm -hmm. we gotta maintain. Mm -hmm. I spoke to someone just a couple of days ago. And it's so easy for us to retaliate. I think everybody watching tonight has had an opportunity to retaliate in the way that you were treated. Everybody has had an opportunity to get back and go low and not just go low, but go lower right. than what they went with you. Right. And again, it's easy to do that. And, and I thank God for the Holy Spirit because he helps me. I, you know, I'll never forget one time I was in, in a little, it wasn't an altercation, but it got ugly at the window of the uh, CVS drive through mm -hmm. It got ugly. And I try my best not to get ugly because I know that if I unleash the Kraken, All right. there will be no pulling back. No. So I try to keep the Kraken in the cage. Amen. And I was simply minding my own business. Right. Pulled up going through the CVS drive through mm -hmm. and, and a remark was made and it just caught me. And in my mind, y'all, I saw my arm reach through the drive through window and snatch her out. <laughs> That's what I saw in my mind. And so I had to reel it in. I had to reel it in. And do you not know for years, I never went to the CVS. I stopped going, I changed my prescription place to Walmart and I eventually changed it to Kroger. Because you always had some issue when you would go. So. And see, I knew when I saw, when I got that vision of snatching her from that window, because I could have done it. She was smaller than me. I could have snatched through there with a, like a, a rattle. And before <laughs> she knew it, I could have had drug her. Snatch me. Yes. I could have drug her through that window, but I didn't drag her. And I just simply said, you know what? I'm going to take the high road. Right. She was another woman. We all women. That's the thing that keeps keeps catching me. Amen. It's not like we have some some mystical body part that are, that that makes you better than me. We all got the same everything. Amen. So there really should be a, a, a harmony and Peace and love and harmony. 
What's that song? You know, <laughs> the babies, Peppa Pig, Peace and Harmony, da, 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 da. in all the world, Peace and Harmony, in all the world. We ought to have peace and harmony as women. Sure. But I knew if I went back to the CBS and she caught me wrong, they would have a they would have in the local Mount Vernon paper, and this is where they would have wrote it. They wouldn't have said altercation at CVS on Kashaka. They would have wrote, pastor's wife snatches CVS employee through the drive through window. Uh, That's what, And it would have been in big, bold print yeah. on the front page. Yeah. That's how they would have portrayed me. So that's yeah, why yeah. I just said, I'm not going. Wash my hands, CVS. Wash yeah, my hands. Glorious. Meltdown at Walmart. Okay, department that I work across from. Is a den of vampires and cutthroats. <laughs> Who say there? Oh, Woo! The talk that goes on in that department is beyond me. All women run to the HR with tattle after tattle after tattle, like first graders on the play yard. I get exhausted from watching them. I have to elaborate more. <laughs> I see you face to face because I know yeah, you. Yeah. I kind of know what you're going to say, but I get that. I get that. And you know what? Maybe we can start where we are. Maybe just, you know, maybe I can just in, in, encourage somebody tonight. You know, we're, we're all we got. Right. If we be honest, some of us, you have had men walk out on you. If, if, and again, this is real talk, and Amen. I don't, I don't mean to, I don't mean to belittle anybody's relationship. That is certainly not what I'm doing. So please don't take it that way. I'm just talking real. I'm getting to a point. Right. But if, you know, if we be honest, a lot of times it's just us. Amen. Men will walk. Definitely. Have you ever heard the say? In D, I don't know if you've heard this because you. <laughs> I heard years ago, and I don't know where I got this, but and I know it's just it's just foolish since I know there's probably nothing to it. But I heard years ago they all they always said, Don't ever buy a man a pair of shoes because he'll walk. Oh, Have you ever wow. heard that? Oh, well, anyway, that's what I heard. And I know there's really no no truth to that. Just something you know people used to say all the time. But my point is this: we have had men walk out on us, and we have still had to stand and bear the, the we can't walk. Yeah. We can't walk. Unfortunately. Man, I walk off tomorrow. Where the baby's gonna go? We're still there. Still here. Women, I I remember when I was growing up, and there was a woman who lived on our street, and I can recall her, and she had children. I can recall her getting up, taking the cab to her job. She would be in her uniform. Amen. And she would get up early morning. She would be in a uniform. She would take the cab to her job. Mm -hmm. And she did that year after year and took care of her kids. And I said all to say, that's another reason why we women, we ought to be champions of each other because right. we can't go nowhere. Right. You know, people, I'm getting mad. I'm so and so, such and so. I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave. And they leave. But we still got to keep it going. We still have to endure. I know my mother was a single mother at one point in time. She, Mama had to keep it moving. She didn't have the luxury of, you know, parking the kids to the side. Now she had help with, the, you know, help with my brother and sister. And then when my uh, my mother and my father married, then you know, Mama had she had a man who was a father to all of us, and he stuck he stuck around. Right. But there are women who who still have year at year in and year out. It's nobody but them. Mm -hmm. When I when I think of um, single mothers, and Pam, hey Pam, good to have you with us. Tell my sister I ain't mad at her, but she know I ain't talked to her, and so you know, Amen. I know the love is still there, but I ain't heard nothing from her. But anyhow, um, you know, there, there, you know, we, you know, we women have had to stand. We've had to stand in spite of. We've had to do it on our own. We've had to shoulder um, the burden. We've had to shoulder the brunt of it. And right. I think about single mothers and, um, you know, I've seen single mothers in action and I have a greater appreciation for them. Right. When, when my daughters were young, I had a husband in the house with me who helped me. Um, so, 
you know, if I didn't want to do something, he, he did a lot of work. He did. A, he was constantly working, but I still had that other person with me. Right. But I've seen uh, relationships where women, they don't have that man. That It's nobody but them. And I have to give them, I take my hat off. If I had a hat on, I would take it off. I have to give them their props because Amen. they don't walk out. Right. You know, I've had, I've been in conversation with young women and it's not always easy. I don't know how they do it. I, honestly, I do not know how you do it. Single mothers who are working full time. You have little people, right. you have a job, you have responsibilities on your job. You have, and I am, I'm new to the real work world. I worked for years with my husband in our small business. Mm -hmm. And I am now in the real work world. I am now in a real company, in a real big, and I still work from home. So I'm still not really in that environment. But when I had to train and I was actually in the office, I don't know how y'all do it because they still have responsibility on top of responsibility. Then you got to go, go home. You got to do it at home. So, and I'm saying all this to say, that's why, you know, we as sisters, and I think of this, this group that comes on every Wednesday night. Um, I, I feel like you guys are part of our, of an extension of my family. Amen. You're an extension of if, if, and I believe this. If, if I needed something, I could reach out to somebody and say, hey, I need what you have. Right. And it may not be anything more than just, you know, hey, Terry. And, and you have. People have said, hey, Terry, please don't stop doing it. Because, you know, it, it, I don't know about you, Dion, but every Wednesday, sometimes I'm just, I'm just rocking like, Lord, you know, I, I really want somebody to get something out of what we said. Amen. Not just, you know, because we're not on here to just spend time. I say this every week. You could be watching my sit down pound life, but you are on here. Yeah. Hopefully that something will encourage you. So, you know, again, I'm just going back to maybe it can start with us. And let me just throw out a challenge since you mentioned this earlier, Dion. Mm -hmm. Let's try this this week. Maybe you guys didn't feel as you weren't as convicted as I am. And I guess convicted is not the right word, but I guess it encouraged as I am about championing each other but let's just try it everybody try complimenting somebody that you normally wouldn't compliment mm -hmm. and let's just see what the response is let's just see what the response and I'm gonna share this with you we went to um, Golden Corral for Father's Day and I don't know if you guys saw this but mm -hmm. I was in the line and I was you know paying for the food and everything and we had all our family with us you know getting ready to eat I, those of you that know, that know me know I love a good Golden Corral meal. I love a good Golden Corral meal. And I was just sitting there, you know, standing there at the line paying for my food. And the little woman that came behind me in the line, oh, you look so nice. And I said, well, thank you. Oh, your shoes look so nice. I, I couldn't wear those. I, I can barely walk in the shoes I have. I said, well, you know, thank you. Your hair, you just look so nice. I oh, said, well, right. yeah, she just went on and on. I said, well, thank you. I wish I looked like you. I said, no, you don't. Oh, wow. That's what she said. I said, no, you don't. Amen. I said, you have beautiful, because she had beautiful blonde hair. I said, you have beautiful hair. You're, you're, you're beautiful the way you are. Well, thank you. Now, I don't know what all brought that on or what led to it, right, right. but I concluded the conversation with her with, you know, you're beautiful just the way the way you looked at me. Yeah. <laughs> My mom just looking. I concluded the conversation with you're beautiful as well. So you, you know didn't what? Tell us that, amen. You, I, well, so much happened that night. Right. But you know what? It made my day. It made me feel good. Mm -hmm. It made me feel good, and she was a stranger. So you know, maybe we can encourage somebody. Else. Why? I was just thinking, and it was genuine. You know, a it genuine was. compliment. It was. Like you can tell when someone's like BSing you. So yeah, yeah, amen to the genuine compliment. Well, it really was. It really was. And again, you know. Although my family teaches, teases me all the time, but um, I really didn't appreciate that. It Amen. came at the right time. Amen. It came at the right because you know sometimes and again, if we be real, this that's why it's called real talk. If we be real, mm -hmm. sometimes we like for we like for people that look like us to encourage, Definitely. to to build us up. To you know, and not tear us down, but to build us up, to make us feel good. Amen. Sometimes we don't get that where we are, and I don't care how you doing, Judy. Good to have you with us tonight. 
um, sometimes we don't get that at home. Right, right. Sometimes, you know, we, you know, and when you do your best and it's not noticed, we, we, we have, it's natural for us to, to want somebody to notice. Right. It's natural for someone to, for us to want somebody to, um, what's the word I'm looking for, Dion? You a college graduate. You know, just acknowledge you. Okay. Or, mm -hmm. So, you know, someone said that to me at my job at the airport. She, um, was working like 80 hours mm -hmm. and it was a part-time job and she was doing 80 hours and she was just said, I don't know if I'm going to stay because you know, they don't even acknowledge what I do, there you go. what I've done. So yeah, there you go. it makes a difference. There you go. And it really does. It makes a difference when people, and it doesn't have to be anything huge. Right, right. I was actually thinking the same thing about, you know, the company that I work for because you know, it's a little, little something down and you know, I had, I got a little crunchy. My spirit got a little crunchy it is. and I wanted to, you know, kind of bark back, throw it up. Okay. But, and I thought instantly, you know, for that, you know, that f small second, just a little bit that I do do, not that I am stellar on the, you know, on the corporate level, but just a little bit that I do do, you know, people want you to say, hey, good job. Right. You know, hey, um, I appreciate that you did that for me, or hey, I appreciate. That you're, you know, you're making the extra step. You're making the effort, even if it's not a perfect thing. Even if you know you're not doing it as perfect, you're not a ten. But you're, you know, you want people to acknowledge the little bit that you do do. So I think, you know, for us, you know, ladies, as as we're going forward, there you go, there, um, there you said af affirmation, and Judy said doing good. Um, you know, as we're going forward, let let us do that. Um, I noticed with. I have I follow a couple of people or yeah people on my Facebook feed, and um, I know Alana's one of them. Heather, I ain't mad at you. Almost ten o'clock. I ain't even mad, and it's almost ten o'clock. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm not even mad. It's almost ten o'clock. I'm not gonna say nothing else. Heather Riley. Um, but there are a couple of people on my Facebook that are um, they're in a sorority, and I know one of them is Alana, and I ain't seen Alana tonight. And, but I'm sure she wouldn't mind she, I mean, telling this. But she always acknowledges her, uh, her sisters. And they have a sisterhood. And I just think that's, um, to me, it's, it's, um, it's phenomenal that, that you see. Now, again, I'm not in that sisterhood. But um, Judy's in one. Oh, that's right. Judy is in one. It's phenomenal that when you see them, they always talk up their sister. Amen. And since this is real talk with Jesus, me and D, I'm a pastor's wife and have been for several years now. And I'll never forget this. I went to a women's event. And at this particular time, I was a young pastor's wife, you know, just now getting in it. Um, at that time, my mother was still with me. So I got a lot of direction and encouragement from Cora. And, um, but I was, I was at another event and I was, you know, talking and, and they had a bunch of us in a, in a group and I made the comment, you know, well, um, we as pastor's wives and, and please pastor's wives who are, who are watching, I'm not, I'm not shading and please don't take offense. I'm, this is my experience. Mm -hmm. Um, I was like, you know, Hey, we, we should be like a, we should be, you know, really thick, you know, cause, cause we pastor's wives are in a, in a position where they can't really share with everybody. Right. And, um, but we can share with each other because we have commonality because we are pastor's wives. And I'm, I'm thinking, you know, me, I'm thinking, well, you know, Hey, that's a good thing. You know, we can, you know, there's some things that we can talk about that we can't share with anybody else. Mm -hmm. And you can help me as a young pastor's wife and I can maybe help you or whatever, whatever. And the comment was made to me, you don't want to be a pastor's, a friend of a pastor's wife blew me away because I never thought people would say that. Mm -hmm. Here I am looking to, you know, kind of to, to, to latch on to somebody that has wisdom, but this is another woman at the, at the core of it. It was another woman speaking to another woman like that. And I guess, again, that's my issue. We got to learn to value one another. Amen. Again, just, just because we the X chromosome, we don't have to go nowhere else with that, but we just need to get back to the place where we value each other. Before we go into anything else, just learn to value each other. Amen. You know, we're different. We don't all have the same giftings. We don't have the same talents. We don't have the same abilities. 
but we're all that X. So we have something where we have a common denominator. Right. So even if you can identify what it is about me that you maybe you like or maybe you don't like, we need to come from the, the standpoint of we're just, we're all the X and we all we got. Amen. You know, if, if the men decide tomorrow, we're going on vacation and we may or may not come back, we still got each other to stand on. We got each other's shoulders to lean on. Amen. So, you know, I guess that's, that's my, that's my soapbox for tonight. But let's, you know, if, 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 if you guys are game out there and somebody wants to kind of, Jackie says we got to encourage each other. We will, we really do need to encourage each other. Women empowerment. That's a good thing. Amen. Women empowerment. Um, because we do, we really want to, we want, hey, Janet, I didn't hey. know you was on there. Uh, we really want to encourage each other. Right. So this week coming up and, um, you know, let's, let's try that. Amen. Let's try encouraging somebody just because. And again, you ain't got to lie. There's always something good you can say about somebody. Maybe Definitely. their hair don't look good, but maybe they had on a bad pair of shoes. Amen. You know, maybe, you know, maybe you, you might have to search for something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Amen. let's just be honest. Amen. You know, you might have to, you know, but find something. If you, you know, if you can't say anything, but you know, this is a beautiful day. Aren't you enjoying the beautiful weather? Something like that. You know, if you mm -hmm. have to make it very generic, but let's try that, y'all. Let's see what happens when we, when we go out of our way to encourage somebody else. Definitely. When we go out of our way to try to make somebody else feel better. Amen. When we go out of our way to try to um, make a connection. So if you're game, if you guys are game with that, try that and let us, um, you know, come when you come back next week, let me know how it worked out for you. Amen. So like I said, I just kind of want to jump into relationship, just kind of on the service tonight. I think next week we'll, we'll take a deeper, deeper level. Okay. Uh, we've been, we've been working up to this, this uh, subject for a minute. But we're going to talk about relationships between men and women. And it don't just have to be husband and wife, you know. But we're going to talk about that. There, you know, we have a lot of single women on here that watch. And not just the night of, but we, you know, praise God, our viewership is picking up. We had, I think, 229 views last week. Amen. So even though people don't, everybody don't watch the night we do it, we get a lot of people watching later. And right. then we get comments even as the week goes on. So um, next week, we're going to talk about relationships between men and women. Sounds good. And um, I just want us to share a little bit about that. I'm going to share my experience. Um, and I want to encourage you young women who are like Dion and the Dion Watch. I, I want to just encourage you to you know, hang in there. Because if, if, you, if you wait on the Lord. Hey, we have no choice. No, 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 you do have a choice. Dion, you could have, you well, could have. What choice do I honestly have that was something that was a smart choice? Okay, see, that's the, that's the qualifier. You said smart choice. But you have had choice. If we be real, Dion, am I telling the I truth? I don't agree. You don't? No. I don't. You haven't had I any. I feel like, you know what, there's choices. You know you can take it. But you know, it's like the stupid choice, and that's not really a choice. Okay, amen. Well, that's basically what I was saying. You did have options, sure, but they weren't the right options. It wasn't the right, it wasn't the right door. Amen. Amen. I get that. So, but what I'm saying is, um, if you will, if you do wait, if you wait on the Lord, God. and I'm not saying it's the easiest thing to do. I, you know, all you know, I'm not saying that. But we're going to delve into that next week. So, um, I just want to say, Janet, saying you're obedient to His word. That's the key right there. Amen. Being obedient to the word of God. And God uses people to speak his word to you. So I know I was obedient to my mother. And the rest is history. God bless me. I'm, I'm a blessed woman today. So, you know, thank you guys for joining us tonight and staying with us, everybody that was there. Um, and we just look forward to sharing with you guys next week. Amen. Be blessed. Love you guys. Enjoy your holiday. Be safe out there. The traffic is crazy right now. 
So be safe, and we look forward to seeing all of you guys next week. We love you. Have a blessed one. Good night, guys. See you guys.